Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is which of the following sequences could be considered as microsatellite? And actually microsatellite is just a repetitive DNA. And if we would take a look in the first um, answer A we have repeat of the two bases G and C. So one repeat second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. So, so microsatellite is just a repetitive sequence. It can be different, for example, as in the first uh, case, we have a repetition of two bases. And if we compare with the second uh, example, we have um, A, G, T, C, one uh, repeat, that is going to be repeated over and over again. So in this case it is repeat one, two, three, four times. And if we will take a look at variant C, we have um, repeat that consists of three bases. A, A, T, A, A, T, A, A, T, as you see, would be repeated. Uh, many times. So our answer would be answer D. Why it is important to know um, microsatellites, uh, their locations in our genome. Actually we have thousands of locations where uh, bases uh, would have a certain pattern and would repeat uh, whether it can be two, four or three bases or more. Human genome have uh, many many places where um, sequence would repeat and usually this is non-coding sequence uh, that doesn't code for any protein but why it is important to know such loci and knowing such information would help us uh, to make a fingerprint of uh, our genome that would be used for example in um, paternity testing or, for example, to find unique um, genetic fingerprint of the genome or we also can say genetic profile of the, say, suspect uh, using biological material found at the crime scene. Let's say in the gene pool for some particular locus uh, people may have uh, how many repeats? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 repeats. Uh, some people may have uh, 13 repeats and some people may have 15 repeats of these two bases. Uh, CA, cytosine and adenine. And these variable fragments of the DNA would be surrounded by stable uh, DNA so we can make primers and can uh, multiply, replicate uh, using PCR these fragments. And in about um, 30 cycles we can get billions of copies and then we can run a gel and we would be able to see a uh, genetic profile of the person for this particular locus. For example, what we see here. We see here only one band that means that person has two chromosomes uh, and uh, in the same locus both chromosomes, one inherited from the mother side, another inherited from the father side, uh, has uh, the same allele that um, would have a um, repeat of the two bases uh, and in this case this is going to be a uh, repeat uh, of 11 times. And as you see, uh, the greater number of repeats uh, would give us the greater, uh, the bigger molecule. And the bigger molecule, the slower it's going to move through the gel. And in this case, we see that this person is homozygous for this locus and got the same size allele uh, from both parents. So we only see one band here. And this person is homozygous for uh, allele number two 
and this person is homozygous for the allele number 3. But also different variants possible, for example, another person may inherit allele number 1 from one parent and allele number 2 from other parent. So this person would be heterozygous. Another person may inherit allele number 1 and 3 and yet another may inherit uh, allele 2 and 3. So as you see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 possible unique variants we can get with 3 alleles in a gene pool and in diploid organism this uh, 3 alleles can produce uh, 6 unique variants. But you may also say that 3 unique alleles in diploid organism can produce 9 variants. But actually, for example, uh, 2 and 3 we may get um, say uh, allele number 2 this person may inherit from mother side and allele number 3 may inherit from father side and if we would take into account that for example he can get allele number 2 from the father side and number 3 from the mother side actually if we run a gel it doesn't matter from uh, which parent this person inherited allele, uh, the same pattern we would see. So when we run a gel, uh, if person has allele number 2 and 3, or if this person would have allele number 3 and 2, for us on the gel this would look the same. And the same is true for this variant and this variant. So actual number of combinations would be 9, but number of unique combinations would be 6. And if we would analyze only one locus, this wouldn't give us a great power of exclusion. Uh, but if we would analyze, for example, 10 loci, and for each locus we would have, instead of 3 variants, say 10 or 20 variants, the number of uh, different combinations, even for single loci, would be much greater. And if we would also consider other loci, uh, each time we have to multiply those numbers. And at the end, for example, FBI using certain different loci would give us a huge number of combinations that can exceed a trillion uh, variants and that is much, much greater than the um, population of our planet. So uh, this um, technique would give us such a power of exclusion that if we would have uh, two biological samples, one, say, uh, from the crime scene, uh, another taken from the suspect, and if we would have the same genetic profile, we can say that uh, this person have been at the crime scene and then it would be up to investigators uh, decide and find uh, the role of this person in the crime. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.